And welcome back. I'm Ryan Recker filling in for Mark Reardon alongside Amy Mark Scores. Amy, you got to meet our next guest here in the break. I know. Well, re-meet him because back in 2009, was it 2009? The Major League Baseball All-Star Game in St. Louis. I got my picture taken with Mr. Gary. Mr. Gary's here. Thank you for coming in, Mr. Gary. What do you say? What do you say? Hey, hey, (laughs) what's up? I watch you every Sunday night when I'm here on doing the show on Overnight America. Do you really? Every Sunday. My God. They changed your time a little bit. They put you a half hour early. They did. They they did. They did. Um, You know, at first I was like, huh, why I got to move, you know? But you know what? There is a whole set of people yeah. who go to work at 3 o'clock and get off at 11, and they're looking for something to do. Uh-huh. So we picked up a whole bunch of people. And then now with the college football season starting, mm-hmm. we'll start catching a lot of people who watch football when they go into overtime, and then they'll stick around and watch us too. So it's kind of fun. You're it's cool. all over. Yeah, You're everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everywhere. How long have you been doing the show, Them Yo People? You know, we are in our fifth year. Awesome. St. Louis has been so good to us. When I, I tell you that, Uh, It just started with a germ. I mean, what people don't know is when all of the unrest came in St. Louis with the Michael Brown Mm -hmm. verdict, the the, the turmoil, whatever you want to call it. um, There was a situation where all the media was in St. Louis. So Mm -hmm. we got CNN in St. Louis. We got ABC, NBC, CBS. And that's all you saw on television Mm -hmm. from the riots, from the this is that, that's that and this that. And so we just kind of snuck in under the radar because people were tired of just kind of saying it all, regardless of how you felt about it. That's all you saw on St. Louis television and really all over. And so this little thing called Them Your People came mm-hmm. in and we decided that we were going to be the show that was the feel-good show. It's the show that puts people to bed laughing and then the next morning it wakes them up saying, I don't believe Mr. Gary did that. But you? guess what? It wasn't me. It was the people. <laughs> you know, the people <laughs> was doing that. I was just giving them a platform to do it. <laughs> you meet some of the most interesting people mm-hmm. on the show. Mm-hmm. You get to you get to go up. You got to talk to 100 people to get that reaction. Or, or can you just draw that reaction out of anyone? No, I think it's anyone. You know, yeah. I know the listeners will find this hard to believe, but I think it's God, God sent. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like twofold because you can just know it. Now, I can tell you this. Sometimes... You don't know what you're going to get. Yeah. You know, it's like uh, Forrest Gump said, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know which one you're going to get. And you will have some um, case in point. We were at the Ambassador Mm -hmm. nightclub and it was a lady, kind of big girl. Right. And she was out with her family Mm -hmm. and um, she was having her birthday celebration. So glad that she was celebrating her birthday. And she said, oh, Mr. Gary, I watch you all the time. Now, I said, thank you. But I did not know the big girl was drunk. Right. (laughs) Uh, and she had these big, um, let me see. You know. I got to look at the time <laughs> so we can't really say things. Yeah, Let's no, just say you know. Just say you chested, know. Right? She was well endowed. She was well endowed. Yeah. And she wanted to put my head on her well endowment. And she was like, oh, Mr. Gabe, come here, come here, come here. And while she was saying, come here, come here, she was jumping, jumping, jumping. And my head was jumping with her big <laughs> People, endowment. People, when the camera's around, they do some stuff like that, don't oh they? Oh, my God. And, um, and she was just like, oh, my God. God, Mr. Gary, you just don't know how good it feels. And I'm like, well, honey, you don't know how I feel right now being on your big and down. I mean, jump, well, jump, 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 jump. When them. you go out and film, yeah, that's the. it's weird when a camera's around. People mm-hmm. feel like they need to perform a little, don't they? You know what? I found that it's them. They yeah. are true. They're not acting. The ones that are acting, not so much. We kind of like, okay, we yeah. got you. But it's the ones that are very organic that you can just tell. That this, case in point, we did karaoke. Them young people karaoke. They actually thought they could sing. <laughs> now you can tell these people they could not sing. Uh-huh. And then to make it so bad, one guy tried to sing um, Luther Vandross. Now you know to sing Luther, you got to bring Luther. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't know who he thought he was, but it wasn't Luther. <laughs> but them are your people, you know. The other girl, I give her the microphone, and she's singing, uh, "Kentucky Fried Chicken." We do, chi- huh? Like the jingle you know, for the. That's what she said. She said, "I want to sing jingles," and maybe somebody heard me sing the jingle. That's I said, actually kind of smart. I said, "Girl, go through the drive-through and get your chicken and keep going." Don't you? There stop. was a famous person that wrote that jingle. Who was that? Uh, it, Luther Vandross wrote was that. Was it him that did that yes, one? it was actually Luther Vandross. Oh. Wait, are you serious? Yeah, I'm dead serious. No, I L- thought there was one of those Vegas, they do a stint in Vegas, um, like Barry Manilow. Didn't he do some jingles too? He did. Very, yeah. very. But a lot of them write jingles for the commercials, yeah. 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 Huh. So we just have what, fun with it. What do you find out about people when you're on the street? Like, what's the, I guess, what's the 
the vibe in St. Louis when you go and actually talk to people this way? Well, first I want to say this to you. Mm -hmm. That is a great question, and I'm going to tell you why. Because this, I mean, if if anybody listening out there in KMOX land, here's nothing else. Hear this. St. Louis is full of a lot of love, a whole lot of love. Mm -hmm. And what you find out is I get a lot of people who thank me for the show. And a lot of people want to just come together. A lot of people are tired of the craziness. And they'll just say, how refreshing you really are. And so people just want to talk about that. People want to, especially people who are not from St. Louis, Mm -hmm. they'll say, you know, I moved here, did not know where to go, did not know some of the good restaurants. I watch your show for that. But then... When we talk to people and the one big St. Louis question comes up, what high school did you go to? (laughs) That's always a let me kind of figure you out to see where you're at. And then depending upon where and when you went to high school, it lets them know if you were part of the DSEC program or not. Mm -hmm. Did you catch the bus out to our neighborhood? Mm -hmm. Right. Or did you live in our neighborhood? You know, so case in point, if someone says that they went to Parkway, Mm -hmm. right, and they went to Parkway like in... 84, 85. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, there weren't a lot of African-American people out in the Parkway District. But Mm -hmm. if they say they graduated from Parkway, then guess what? You said, hmm, okay, so you rode the bus out to Parkway. And it's all good and great because once you're there, you're part of the school system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So people really are uh, hungry to say everything that you see on television about us is not the way that it is. You know, I love St. Louis. I, I love the people in St. Louis. And that's what we find out a lot. Yeah. yeah. I really enjoy your show. It's on ABC. It's on Sunday night going into Monday morning now at midnight. That's correct. The yeah. Bewitching Hour. <laughs> you know why it's The Bewitching Hour? Because you can get away with stuff. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> that's, it. You, that's it. You have a lot of fun on the show, I can tell. <laughs> yeah, we you, do. Uh, let me play this real quick because I don't think you've heard this, Amy. Mr. Gary interviewed David Letterman here in town, and that was one of the great interviews. Let me play this clip for you. Did you hear that, Amy? Did you know that? I didn't hear that. No, I knew that. I, uh-huh. I was like, Mr. Gary, okay. I have to talk to David Letterman. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here, let me see if I can play this here real quick. Hey, what do you say? It's Mr. Gary, the king of hospitality. Why am I the king of hospitality? Because I can take you where you need to be, and I get to take you to who you need to see. And I know right now you all are looking and saying, oh my God, it's Santa Claus. It is Santa Claus. And guess who Santa Claus really is? His his real name is David Letterman. Hey, Mr. Letterman, I, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's a pleasure oh to God. be here. Hey, now listen, the name yeah. of our show is, read that for me. Them, yo, people. And you are our people, David. I, I appreciate that. Oh my I, God. I, uh, uh, pleasure to be here. <clears throat> and I, I wish I had it in me to bring the kind of joy to the world <laughs> that Santa does. I know. That is so good. That was That's an awesome. awesome moment. Well, I tell you what, I invite everyone to go to my website at Them Your People and watch that interview because the question I asked David, I said, who are your people? Mm-hmm. And he looks dead to me in that camera and he says, I can't think of anyone who is not my people. That's awesome. How wonderful of an mm-hmm. answer is that he said, and the way you can really judge uh, to be happy in life is what you do for others. Mm -hmm. And isn't that just so true? Yeah. You know, think about you all in Radio Land and the show that you do, right? Um, Like, people have got me to the point to understand you make a difference. Mm -hmm. And so when we come on these airwaves, be it the radio, be it television, we got to understand that there's somebody out there that's listening, that's going through something, Mm -hmm. be it good, bad, or indifferent. But so we get the opportunity just to give them our point of view or come in and affect their lives. And so that interview taught me that with David because he did not interview with anybody else. Yeah. Wow. Here. It was me. And they basically came and got me and said, somebody wants to meet you. And I'm like, I want to meet me. And I and I went to him. You know, he has this big beard. And that's mm-hmm. why I said it's like Santa Claus because he had the beard on and everything. And I'm like, wait a minute, this is David Letterman. And he said, who are you? And I said, well, I'm Mr. Gary. <laughs> he said, well, because I see so your strange. picture all over the screens and everything. I said, well, yeah. And he said, well, you want to inter- inter- interview me? And that is like the Whitney Houston of life. Whitney Houston's song says, give me one moment in time when I'm facing destiny and all my dreams are heartbeat away and the answers are all up to me. He says, do you want to interview me? I said, roll tape. 
and we roll tight. Boom, just like that. And that's just kind of how it was. We're, and- we're going to have a lot of politicians and probably celebrities in town because of the midterm election in the Senate. You know, we had Joe Biden secretly came into town. How about in, in the next break? I want to ask you maybe some of those places. If there's some visitors coming in, into St. Louis, mm-hmm. what are those places they have to visit? Let's let's do that next here. Okay. Mr. Gary joins us in studio. You're one of my favorite people in I, St. Louis. I think you're saying? fantastic. I, I am. <laughs> I ain't nothing but the truth. <laughs> you're on KMOX. <laughs> you're home for the best blues coverage. America's Sports Voice. KMOX. Welcome back to KMOX. Filling in for Mark Reardon, it's Amy Marshcores. I'm Ryan Recker in studio with Mr. Gary. What do you say? What do you say? Hey, St. Louis, wake up. How y'all doing? <laughs> Who does your social media, by the way? It's uh, themyourpeople.com. No, because anytime I tweet at you, it could be like one in the morning, you'll respond. Well, that's why. Yeah. You got people. You I got, got to have the people. <laughs> You gotta be ready be for the people night. don't sleep. Right, That's right. People don't sleep. Right. People don't sleep in St. Louis. St. Louis is a happy town. <laughs> well, Mr. Gary, you and I were talking during the break about how much bad press St. Louis has gotten in the past few years, not just nationally, mm. but globally. And, and it's almost toxic sometimes to read the headlines. And you said that you grew up in University City. Yes. And yes. In, in, graduated in 82. That's right. Yes. And when you were a kid, you didn't see. The Mm-mm. racial divide that Mm-mm. we're seeing now in the headlines. Mm-mm. And and let me say this to you, and I think this is why. See, when we're young, we don't appreciate what we have. See, University City was a place that had its own swimming pool, own skating rink, own after-school programs. We had our own schnooks, which was nationals at that time. Mm-hmm. You know, so it was a community within the community, so you didn't have to leave. So when we hear a lot of people say that they went to the Boys and Girls Clubs and this and that and whatever, those are basically people who lived in the city, right? And that's what they had. But we had our own everything. So at that time in University City, U City was still predominantly Jewish. And anyone listening, keep it to yourself. I don't want to hear it because y'all know that U City was predominantly Jewish, right? Um, and because it was predominantly Jewish, um, that means a lot of the kids went there, right? So we had the opportunity to intermingle with each other. And so many times when people say, oh, I don't see color, and you say, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that can be very, very true. We didn't see color. You know, I remember I could just sit here and start talking about Mr. Benevitz, you know, Amy Bradshaw, all of um, Christine Bachman. These were our friends. And so when we finished school, we went and we played with them. We did everything together. And so then once you uh, leave school, you graduate from high school. And there, uh, which I give U City credit and my church credit for who I am now, because I was the president of the senior class. Hmm. I was the editor of the yearbook. I was the business manager of the newspaper. I had it going on. I just didn't realize it then, right? (laughs) I did not know I was destined to be the king. (laughs) So we do all that. Then I went to Mizzou. And then at Mizzou... Yes, because it was uh, a minority, very much, uh, uh, when we were like 4%, 5% African-American. But guess what? Because we lived in the dormitories with everybody else, again, we all got together. So it's something about when you have to be together, Mm -hmm. when you have to live together in the same dorm, when you have to go to the same meetings, when you sit up in classes or whatever, But a friend of mine, as I was sharing with you, said to me, and this is something I want everybody to think about who's listening right now for my people. If you've never had someone of a different color in your household, meaning to eat dinner, I'm not talking about that you had them come over because they were providing a service for you, be it black or white, you know, be it the gardener or being the housekeeper or the fix it man or something like that. I'm saying when you really have invited a friend over to say, hey, let's sit down, let's eat dinner. If you have never exposed your children to that, that's putting a barrier up right there. Because once a person sits down at your table in your home, that's the way you really are welcoming. And so that's why I really am the king of hospitality. I'm not new to it. I'm true to it. And so hospitality has no color. It's about how you want to be treated and how you treat others. So when we talk about restaurants, when we talk about um, the hotel industry, when we talk about going to Um, the gas station to even get gas. You know, we've gotten away so much from the thank you. I appreciate you. Mm -hmm. And so that whole color divide, you know, when you say how everything was and when you go to St. Louis, but I'm here to tell everybody in St. Louis, St. Louis is not the only place. 
you can travel to any city in the USA, and when you turn that news on, they're going to talk about the same things that they talk about in St. Louis, who dropped, killed, who shot, who ran after who the night before. And for hmm. those who say that, you know, well, I just don't like St. Louis. I just want to get out of St. Louis. Well, I'll tell you what you do. Go to the airport and go out of the country. And if ever you've been out of the country, it's just that thing about your passport when it's time to come back in. <laughs> you don't know what it is, mm-hmm. but you feel it like, mm-hmm. oh, my God, I hope I can get back in. There's so many people who talk and want to come to the United States until it is ridiculous, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And people love St. Louis. I can tell you, I um, am the meeting planner by trade. So a lot of conventions I'm a part of, mm-hmm. you know, with the Church of God in Christ. We just had the ladies of Alpha Kappa Alpha, the ladies of the circles, all of these different organizations that come and you know what they say oh my god st louis i love st louis they want to know about sweetie pies they want to know what is this thing called a white castle and what is this little (laughs) thing called a toasted ravioli Mm -hmm. and where's the chinaman located you know so you know it's just time for i think for people to rediscover like how how do we make everyone that ambitious to want to come well not maybe not ambitious but how do we get the people to all feel like that about st louis how do we get that message out there that this is a good place because we have to talk to each other, yeah. just like we're doing right now. And we have to get out of our comfort zones. We cannot go to the same grocery store that we always go to. We cannot go to the same baseball games that we go to. Uh, support each other. Mm-hmm. If you have a niece or a nephew, stop waiting to have them make it to the World Series playoff mm-hmm. to support them. And, I mean, St. Louis is so good about that, too. We love us some Cardinals when they winning. Yeah. Then when they <laughs> yeah. losing, them your people. Well, 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 you know, they yeah. need to get a new manager. Well, what was I? Y'all weren't saying that two years ago when we won it, you know? So it's just getting people out of their comfort zones to talk yeah. about it and to just embrace what all St. Louis. Because, you know, when you think about it, we've got University City, The Loop. Okay, we've got Westport and Westport is making a big Mm -hmm. comeback now with all that's going on over there. Right. We have the Central West End. We've got Dogtown. We've got St. Louis now with the big, beautiful arch makeover. Oh, my God. I was there on opening day for that. Right. It is just absolute beautiful. But you got to make sure you have people and make sure that your young people are going on vacation and so you can't tell your people that they're going on vacation and you take them over to Berkeley. That ain't a vacation. You got to get in the car and <laughs> drive. <laughs> because sometimes people are on vacation. Like people say, oh, I'm going to uh, do a staycation. Well, vacation, the root word is vacate. That means stop doing what you normally do. Yeah. So get in your car and drive up to Columbia. It's a tank sure. of gas. Go to Springfield. Go to Branson. Now, when you go to Branson, you might want to take your life jacket and but I'm bummed. Oh, don't yeah, call boy. in. Yeah, Just boy. have fun. Well, you know, we only got about another minute. Um, but I, you mentioned a bunch of great places. Yeah. Because of we have, I'm sure we're gonna have politicians like Joe Biden mm-hmm. was in town yesterday secretly. He went to like Pie Pizzeria, yeah. and then he went to the. Didn't he go up on the top of the arch too? Yeah, I think he yeah, went to the he arch. Did, yeah. he, so he had to do all the spectator things. We're gonna have a lot of people in town. Can you name just a few really awesome places people can check out? While they're uh, in town. Well, first of all, they got to go to Emo's. Mm-hmm. I want them to go to the Square Beyond Compare. I want them to go to U-City because I want them to make sure they go to Blueberry Hill. Uh-huh. And yes. go up and down the Walk of Fame is there, right? Hopefully and the trolley's up by the, the trolley, time. The yeah. trolley, yeah, it should be up. And then I want them to go downtown. I want them to see the arch, right? But then downtown is just so much to see up and down Washington Avenue. So those are the must. Yeah. yeah. I think when you come to, to can people easy. Again, what's your website? My website is themyourpeople.com. Uh, and here's the deal. Here's the good part. Just found out this. If you take your smartphone out and if you say, who is the king of hospitality? Mr. Gary pops up. No way. Boy, do it, who do is it. the king of hospitality? Who is the king of hospitality? Go look it up Mr. right now. Gary. I just want to send a big shout out and thank you to everyone for checking the show out. We come on on Sunday nights on ABC 30. Mm-hmm. We're here to have fun because y'all are people. Mr. Gary, you're still one of my favorite people all the time. I, I, I think that you do such a great job in everything you do. The conversations that you bring up to people, you're very great at it. Thank you so much, Mr. Gary. Thank you. Come get your people. <laughs> this is Ron.